Hello, I'm Ed Raby, otherwise known as the Rabbit Atheist, a former pastor turned atheist, now a compassionate anti-theist. Welcome to my channel. Feel free to like or dislike the video as you see fit, so feel free to hit those buttons. Feel free to comment below, and I would appreciate it if you would subscribe to the channel and hit your notification bell for more content as it is released. You're also free to share my videos as much as you like. The purpose of this channel is educational, uh, particularly educational involving deconversion issues, atheist issues, and uh, Bible and theology relationship to deconversion and, and atheist issues. Uh, mostly, I try to be a home and a haven for those of us who have left the Christian faith or any other faith and have found some mode of free thinking, either agnosticism, deism, or as most of them are, atheism. So, um, today I just want to address a topic. It's actually part of a comment that I will address uh, later this week. Um, but uh, just in regards to my last video, uh, my wife is doing very well. And um, it was just a week off that I had to take uh, because of the various things going on with her. So hopefully I'll get back to a little bit more regular video schedule uh, as she's more and more able to do things. I'm sure this week she'll spend a lot of time visiting whoever she can visit uh, within, of course, COVID restrictions and a bunch of other things. But uh, today <clears throat> uh, I'm going to partially address a question I think that I'll address on Friday. I will do a double basically of uh, Friday videos addressing all the questions for the past two weeks. So, um, uh, because of the missed week. So I just wanted to let that be known. But the topic for today is, is faith and religion good for anything? <clears throat> and the reason I ask that question is because um, as somebody who is deconverted, I spend an enormous amount of time trying to rethink things in relationship to reality. Um, and part of my struggle is religious thinking and thinking based on faith uh, causes one to draw conclusions that are completely erroneous and also impairs your judgment. Um, and so I'm not really sure my position on this is going to be uh, interesting. <clears throat> too much different than a few other atheists. Uh, I do label myself a compassionate anti-theist. What an anti-theist is, is a person who actively in some way opposes religion and the spread of faith because they feel that those things are dangerous, that they see the danger and the poisoning that those things do to society, and so they take an active part in trying to uh, curtail them or reverse them or get people to see how foolish some of this stuff is. Um, the compassionate part for me is I understand why people hold on to faith and religion so long, and so I try to exercise a lot more patience and restraint <clears throat> and a lot more understanding as far as uh, why people hold on to their faith for as long as they do or hold on to their religion as for as long as they do. But it's often said that, you know, even if people hold on to their faith and don't necessarily believe uh, some of the main tenets, they can still do a lot of good with religion and faith. Uh, and one of the commenters that I'll address more fully coming up uh, this weekend uh, or Friday made the statement, you know, I try to point out the good of religion. Now, I'm going to say this. There is that which is truly religious and theological and belief system oriented. And then there are those things surrounding religion that anybody can do. And I think the problem I have with it is almost all the good things, if not all the good things that I see in a religion, are the things that anybody can do. I go back to, I think it was Christopher Hitchens who made the statement that you can't show me anything good that religious do, religion does that could not also be done by a non-religious person. In other words, um, you, you know, if somebody, oh, it, there's nothing essential in religion that causes people necessarily to do good things. Um, you know, how does, for instance, you know, the doctrine of the Trinity help people do good things? 
how does uh, the doctrine of belief of the inspired and errant word of God do any good in religion? You know, especially when you consider the nature of the Bible and how if you really look at it and read it for what it is, it's a very repugnant book in a lot of respects. I mean, there's some good statements in it, don't get me wrong. You know, truth has a way of, you know, expanding beyond religious borders and still gets in them. But that's not necessarily a good religion. You know, it's, it's kind of like uh, probably a good example is Jesus' statement, you know, treat others like you would like to be treated. Nearly every religion has a statement like that somewhere in its holy writings or something. Uh, it's a universal principle, it seems to be, that's more human than it has anything to do with religion. So does religion do anything? I mean, Christopher Hitchens was also, you know, his most famous book probably is God is Not Great, uh, How Religion Poisons Everything. And he goes through systematically destroying every notion, oh, religion does this good. And he kind of takes them all on and says, listen, what is really required to do good is empathy, human empathy. It doesn't require religion. Now, can religion, can a person's religious beliefs inspire empathy? Perhaps. And maybe it's that inspiration we're talking about that's good. But if you need religion to inspire your empathy, doesn't that say something about you as a person? Um, em being having empathy, uh, you know, I understand that some people have more of it than others. And it doesn't matter whether you're religious or not. I, I've known religious people that had no empathy whatsoever. Um, I think undercutting that, for instance, is, you know, something like the doctrine of hell. Uh, I often ask this question, you know, let, let's... Let's say all you theists out there are correct, okay? And I end up in front of the throne, and because I'm an atheist, I'm going to hell. The question I have for all of you theists, what are you going to do about that? Oh, I'm not going to question the judgment of God. I, I, so you don't have the basic human empathy that says, you know, that's a pretty crappy thing to do to somebody, to burn them alive forever. You know what? Um... You know, I, I think I should stay here and keep petitioning for Ed's release. Now, I'm going to tell you, that's what I would do. If I found myself in heaven and I, I knew that there was anybody roasting in a place of eternal torment and fire, I would be searching for a way to get them out uh, because that's just me. That's human compassion. Um, empathy does not require religion, I don't think. I think it just requires being human. And I'm not really sure that religion always inspires empathy. I think sometimes it, it more often inspires coldness. A good classic example is everybody will talk about the unconditional love of God. Uh, but then uh, when you ask them why they stopped hanging with a certain person or why this person, you know, I, I remember countless times that there would be some person in the church that was struggling People would work with them, work with them, work with them, and get to a certain point and say, oh, I'm not working. I'm giving them over to God. And, you know, I'm like, well, where is unconditional love and all that? Okay, um, we're supposed to emulate God. God has unconditional love, which means I keep loving a person no matter how unlovely they become. And everybody amends that. <clears throat> and yet, somehow, people can still shut that off. They can still get rid of it. I think it's the, such a high standard of love, it's impossible for humans to reach. <clears throat> and eventually, human beings just go, yeah, screw it. I can't do it. So I'm just not going to. I mean, I'm going to have to trust God, quote unquote, that he'll take care of it. The problem I have with that viewpoint is it seems to me that if we had an actual good, solid understanding that, you know, yeah, you know, I can work with somebody to a certain point, but unconditional love is not possible. I don't believe in loves without condition anymore. Um, love has to have some sort of condition from which it grows. Uh, for me, um, one of the better definitions of love out there was, you know, where somebody's happiness is intertwined with somebody else's happiness. In other words, 
I'm not happy unless the person I love is also happy, and they're not happy unless I'm happy. And so we both work for each other's mutual happiness. That is a pretty decent definition of love, and I don't think that is impossible because we're talking about working for each other's happiness, not necessarily guaranteeing each other's happiness. So does religion really require to bring about empathy? No, I don't think so. I mean, let's just be honest. Any good work that religious people do, I can probably do it as a secular person and do it for very human, humanistic and very uh, empathic religions, but it doesn't necessarily. So when somebody points out the good that religion does, I can always say, yeah, but they could also do that whether they were religious or not. <clears throat> it doesn't take a religious person to open up a soup kitchen. Hell, gangsters used to open up soup kitchens. Um, just having a basic understanding of the plight of humans is is not, you know, necessarily religious. It's just being human. It's being a socially oriented statement. Now, that, of course, brings us to the question of faith. Well, well, I've heard a lot of people say, well, I'm not really religious, but I'm a person of faith. Does faith do any good? Um, <clears throat> faith is believing in something that you can't prove. Now, one could say that maybe inspiration has elements of faith. For instance, when a scientist goes into a thing and he's free thinking, he's trying to solve a problem, and he gets an idea. And at first, it doesn't seem to work, but he he has this hunch that if he keeps trying different things along this line of thinking, he will find an answer. Could that be construed faith? I, I don't know. Um, I think sometimes faith also has the element of you're believing in something that can't be proven or disproven. And that's that's the real rub, for instance, with the belief of God, because I know as an atheist, I can't pr not prove, I can't disprove the existence of God. My statement is always there's simply not enough evidence for me to consider the fact that God exists at this point. Uh, I There are countless explanations that don't involve God, no God required, that still work. So this, uh, you know, continues to leave me with a question. If religion and faith have any good, it's very minimal, and I would say unnecessary. So, I mean, it doesn't mean that I won't point out when religious people do good things, <clears throat> but what part of their religiosity is essential for those good things to happen? What part of their faith, their doctrine is essential for those p things to happen? Because if I, you know, well, you know, Christians are supposed to be compassionate and care for people, well, other people can care for people and be compassionate and not necessarily have religion. What part of religion makes certain good things that they do better than everybody else? And I don't think you really have that. I think Christopher Hitchens' words hold true that anything that religious people do in the name of faith or their doctrine or theology, a person of non-faith can also equally do with equal results. I don't think that that's the issue. The real issue, I think, with a lot of people, to me, is as somebody who's deconverted and one who looks back and says, oh, holy shit, did I waste a lot of time, money, and energy on this? And the, the thing about that is the biggest thing I see <clears throat> that is damning to religion is how much it takes away from childhood, from teenage years, from people in their 20s and their young adult, you know, they, they are robbed because they are indoctrinated of living a much better life than they, they could. They have this viewpoint on the universe and everything that doesn't allow them sometimes to do certain things or enjoy certain things or be with certain people. If anything, religion is probably one of the biggest promoters of tribalism, which keeps us fighting with each other. Uh, I was listening to uh, Prophet of Zadi, and this is one of his remedial Bible lessons from a year or two ago, where he's talking about the book of Revelation. And he makes a statement, and I'm paraphrasing a little bit, but he's makes the statement in that. He says, 
you know, the book of Revelation is often used to demonize certain groups of people, to demonize certain places, people. I mean, even today, I, you know, I heard that Trump being denied his election or um, COVID and all this other stuff is signs of the last days. If I had a flip and nickel for everybody who predicted the end of the world and it didn't came about, I, I could retire. Um, I've lost track of the number of prophecies over people that just did not come true, you know, and it's funny because, you know, all these people that predicted, say, Trump's victory, well, that didn't work. Well, now what? Um, well, I'm not a false prophet. Yeah, yeah, you are. You, you, you kind of are. Um, and you don't want to admit it because you don't want to admit that maybe this is all make-believe. And if you admit that it's all make-believe, then you would be able to see clearly that everything you're doing is a colossal waste of time and you're being deceptive. The problem I have with saying that religion and faith do good is I think they do 90% shit, okay? I think the negatives far outweigh the positives. And the positives can indeed be done with people that don't have faith. Now, it does bring up a problem and this is something that I've mentioned several times before with atheist groups, is that the one thing religion does have down is they do have a better sense of community uh, than atheists do. And that's probably because atheists aren't bound together by something. We are mostly, I think, bind together just to talk about things and, and to do things together in self-preservation of our own selves. And so that's, you know, maybe the only motive that we get together or to talk about ideas or whatever. And so I think atheists have to work at, and free thinkers in general have to work at community because, you know, we're still going to argue about stuff. Okay. And it doesn't matter. I mean, you know, Christians argue about theology, Islamic people argue about theology. It's all over the place. We don't argue about theology. I think we end up arguing about politics and philosophy and things that are real, uh, science, what science can achieve, so on and so forth. And these are, in my mind, better arguments because they're actually dealing with reality. But it doesn't change the fact that what we have is not a belief. We don't have a belief. We don't have a cause. As an atheist, I don't really have a cause. As a person, I do. But as an atheist, there's no atheist cause, okay? There's no atheist great commission. There's, you know, I'm not compelled by a great commission to go out in all the world and preach your atheism. And I think this is why, you know, people can observe that religious people have a better sense of community. But community can lead to a lot of tribalism, which leads to a lot of infighting between human beings. So whether or not their sense of community is actually beneficial is also questionable. Trying to find a sense of community as an atheist that's beneficial, I think, is very difficult um, because we, once you discard the belief of God, your mind is, and afterlife and all that, your mind is pretty much free to go where it wants and you have to start guiding it yourself. And so you end up thinking a lot of diverse thoughts. Uh, a lot of my viewpoints, a lot of my things have changed since I deconverted. And it's because the religion and the faith aspects are gone, and I have to look at things from a far more objective point of view. Can I prove this, or is this just my opinion? And I don't have any appeal to authority. I'm not special pleading on anything. You know, trying you know, to get rid of all the mucky muck in my head has been a great challenge. And the thing is, if religion is so great, I wouldn't have all that mucky muck. I wouldn't have all that stuff to clear off and clean up and get rid of. Uh, I'm kind of envious of younger atheists because you guys are, or people that didn't grow up in the church, because you guys don't have that and and you should appreciate that. Um, you know, I remember when I was in the church, everybody wanted a gruesome testimony. The testimonies that were the most gruesome were the coolest. Oh, look at this guy, he was an ax murderer and he gave his heart to Jesus and look at him now, he's preaching the gospel. Yeah, and he still owns an axe. Um, that bothers me. You know, it, it's how easy, I mean, that's probably the most damnable thing that Christians do is they will literally forgive 
anything. If somebody goes to the altar, cries a little bit and says, I gave my heart to Jesus and I'm filled with the spirit. I don't care. You killed four people in cold blood. You should be put away. You know, <laughs> you, you raped this girl. She shouldn't be forgiving you and then going off and, you know, you know, whatever, you know, I'm sorry. You know, I think that that's denial of reality. And, you know, it just, I, I'm sorry. I, you know, yeah, maybe there's some good that comes out of religion, but I think the problem with it is anybody could do it. And most of the rest of it is far more superseded by the brainwashing, the psychological manipulation, the whole manipulative garbage that is faith. Um, you know, if you want to know one blessings that I have right now is I'm really not trying to manipulate anybody with any viewpoint of mine. I'm not trying to, you know, I'm trying to convince you to be an atheist. I'm not going to force you. I'm not going to hold a gun at your head and say, you must be an atheist, give up your belief in God. I don't care about that. What I do care about is when you try to impose what you want on me. And that's been a large problem uh, in the United States and around the world with religion in general. You know, people do some of the most heinous, evil things in the name of their faith. And you'll never really see people of atheist persuasion doing evil things in the name of their atheism. Uh, people often bring up, well, what about Stalin? Like, yeah, Stalin did a lot of shit, but he, there, you know, Soviet Russia had a religion. It was Stalin as the Messiah. Um, and the, the religious pageantry is very obvious. And sorry, folks, Hitler was a Roman Catholic, a very pagan Roman Catholic, but he did believe in God. <clears throat> I mean, come on, the SS war belt buckles that said God is for us or God will get us victory or whatever. Um, they believed in God. So that wasn't, they just believed that they were God's instrument to purify the earth from all these lesser races. Um, so yeah, I mean, evolution ism, poor understandings of evolution kind of influence some of their thoughts, but it doesn't change the fact that it was poor understandings of things. Um, so you don't, you know, I mean, those are the two classic examples, but they're easily dismissed. I don't really see people doing truly evil things in name of their belief system unless they're a hyper fundamentalist, either religiously or politically. If you're not a hyper fundamentalist, my views are the only way to look at the universe in those categories. Usually you're not going to become an axe murderer or, or destroy something. And where does most of that stem from? Religion, real religion. I don't know, just some things to think about. If you got some comments about this issue, you're certainly more than welcome to drop them. But at this present time, I'm going to be inclined to agree with Christopher Hitchens that religion does indeed poison everything. There may be something good to it, but that good has been poisoned by a seeping poison of religiosity. And I don't think faith or religion do any good for anybody other than keep your mind off reality. And that is a very dangerous thing to ignore. And hopefully, uh, once again, thank you for all coming by today. I appreciate you coming by. Sorry for last week not having any videos, but you know, it is what it is. You got to take care of your family. Um, but in the meantime, I hope that all of you have a great day and I hope someday I can convince you to be a rabid atheist like myself. In the meantime, this is Ed Ravy, also known as the Rabbit Atheist, signing off and wishing you a good day.